Hi guys, hope you're well and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you a very different video and it's talking about how the law of attraction has changed my life. And honestly, I cannot believe the turnaround in my life since believing and knowing about the law of attraction. So if you wanna find out exactly what has happened to me, how my life has changed so drastically for the better, and a little bit about what it is, then just keep watching. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Okay, so I'm really going to briefly go into what the law of attraction is. This isn't gonna be a full video into that, and I can do another one of those, but this is really just kind of show you how my life has changed since believing in the law of attraction and what it's done to me. So the law of attraction basically believes that you put out positive thoughts and positive energy into the universe. And the way that it works is basically the positive thoughts and the positive energy that you put out, you entice it back into your life. I guess you could say it kind of is similar to karma and things like that. And the principle of it is very, very similar. It believes that obviously positive thinking, you eliminate all negative thoughts and you really believe in yourself. Likewise, it also believes that you need to stay 100% positive and you need to be grateful and show gratitude for the things that you do have in your life. I mean, someone can have everything but still be empty and less in another area and they just might not be grateful for the things they have. And it's really about being grateful for what you have in all aspects. Now, the law of attraction works not just in terms of relationships, it can work in terms of wealth, it can work in terms of health. There are so many different aspects and it's really really about honing in on what you want. So I'm going to go into a little bit more as to how it changed my life and the ways that I think the law of attraction has actually impacted me. Now the first time I actually heard of the law of attraction is actually a girl over here on YouTube. I can't remember her name. Her channel she doesn't no longer do. I'm hoping that she'll start it back up again soon and if I can remember who she is I will leave her videos linked below because she done so many videos on it years ago now. I remember her doing she had one channel from before when she had her daughter and then she did some more when she had her daughter so I'll leave her link below if I can find her however I basically watched some of her videos and at first I was a bit like hmm I don't really believe in any of this this sounds a bit too wishy-washy for me sounds a bit too like hippie and now I feel like I'm a mental person and I feel like people look at me as if I'm a little bit crazy when I say that the law of attraction has changed my life so, so much. So let's bring it back to basics. The first time that I really think the law of attraction changed my life was for a materialistic purpose. Now, I'm not saying that this is for everything, but there are a couple of materialistic things in here. There are a couple of wealth things in here. There are a couple of work things in here, relationships. There are quite a few things in here. So the first time that I feel like it impacted me and it changed my life that I can re proper remember being allocated to that would be when I took a test drive in a Range Rover Evoque. Now, I have been, since a very little girl, saying that the two cars that I would like in my life when I'm older, and the second one's kind of changed because now I know the realisms of what tax and insurance and all that malarkey is. Um, I don't actually think I want it, but the most expensive one was a Bentley. I said that one day I would love to drive a Bentley. If I can ever afford to drive a Bentley, that is still on my list. I would love to drive a Bentley. Maybe a tad unattainable, but I don't have those thoughts at all. I kind of put all them aside. The one that I said that I wanted to drive, and everyone was like, you're never going to drive one of those, is a Range Rover Evoque. Since being a little girl, I have loved a Range Rover Evoque. For as long as I can remember knowing about cars, that has always been the car that I looked at and said, I want that car. And I am now the owner of a Range Rover Evoque, and this happened at the age of 23. So at the age of 23, I owned and drove a Range Rover Evoque. Now, for me, I never thought that I wouldn't ever have it. There was never any of that. I always put out that I will have a Range Rover Evoque. And at the time, I was tied into another car, and I'd had real bad issues with it. I basically had to swap my car when I was pregnant with Clayton, and it basically meant that I ended up with this other car, trading it in, and I had so many problems. It was rolling down the hill on my drive, to the point that I had police knocking at my door because I had unknowingly, it had rolled down my drive because the handbrake wasn't working properly. And this was a pretty new car as well. And there were so many things going on. And I remember me and Adam going out one day, and I was saying, come on, let's go and test drive a few cars. Let's have a look at a few and see what we want. And I remember, 
I went and drove a Q3, I drove an X3 because my parents had had one of those. We drove an A3, um, what else did we drive? And the Range Rover Evoque. I feel like there was one more, but I can't remember. But we went out and we drove some more. And the one that I was drawn to the most was the Range Rover Evoque. And we went in, we sat down, and we went through all the finance options. And it just kind of wasn't looking as if it was going to be affordable and within our budget. And we kind of left a little bit depleted. We went to Vauxhall, we went to a few other garages and had a look around to see what we could find. And then a couple of months later, I was searching and I said to Adam, it had gotten to the point that my car was getting really bad at this point. And I said to him, I'm gonna have a look online. I'm gonna have a look at some options for financing and stuff like that. And Adam's like, you're crazy. We're never gonna be able to afford it. What are you doing? There's no point wasting your time. And I was like, I will, I will find something. I am adamant that this is gonna happen, that I will find a plan, a deal, a finance option whatever it may be I will find a way to have this car whether it's a second hand car or whatever it may be and I stumbled across the perfect car it was a grey Range Rover Evoque which was exactly what me and Adam wanted and it was everything that we needed it was within the exact time scale that we needed because I had to basically get rid of my car and sell it and I'd gone down to we buy any car and it was just everything it was completely within our budget the spec was amazing it was coming before Christmas which is when we needed it and everything was just working out and that was the first time and when I phoned Adam I remember saying Adam saying no there's got to be a catch and there was no catch and I am now the owner of a Range Rover Evoque I am obsessed with it I love it it's my dream car it's everything I've ever wanted and I have it now for as long as I want it or as long as until I want to get a new car but so far I'm like two and a half years in and normally at this point I'm like itchy to want a new car there's none of that with this and I believe that it was generally down to the law of attraction and me putting out into the universe that I will own that car by going out and test driving it and all those things I really truly believe that I brought that car to me it was the exact right spec at the same at the right time at the exact moment I needed it within our price budget that was never able to fit within our price budget before. So I genuinely believe the law of attraction helped in that aspect. The next time that I remember the law of attraction really kind of honing in and working was last year. So I broke my foot when I was pregnant with Parker and I basically got a verdict um, like five or six months after I broke it, basically saying it would be broken for life, that I would never be able to do any form of exercise again. And at the age of 23, at 24, to get a diagnosis like that, was soul destroying it was very very upsetting and I wasn't willing to stick with it so we basically came and moved down to Devon from London I'd had lots of x-rays MRIs back down in London with my doctors I'd gone to private doctors and stuff like that and I was basically told this is the end of the road for you and your foot as such and basically I then went to my doctors here and I basically said to them look my foot's, I'm in a lot of pain with it, is there anything we can do? And he referred me for the physio, and in the interim he had me on a waiting list to be seen at um, a hospital that specialises in orthopaedics. And during that time I went through physio, my foot started to get better, the daily pains were slowly decreasing. I still do get pain in my foot now, um, However, I went down into the hospital months later when I finally got my appointment through. They ran a couple of x-rays and MRIs on my foot and all things like that. And my foot was healed. And this is kind of like the, oh, like Jesus rising from the dead sort of moment and resurrected himself. This is kind of that sort of moment. This is going against everything that science has told us that... I was point blank told it will never heal. If it hasn't healed 18 months down the line, you are no longer going to have a foot that's gonna be able to mend itself, and it did. And I truly believe that was because I was putting out there that I didn't want a broken foot anymore, that I wasn't going to have a broken foot, and that my foot would heal. And I was putting it out into the universe as much as possible. And the law of attraction believes that you completely eliminate those negative thoughts, and that for every negative thought you put out there, there is like tons more positive thoughts that you need just to override that one negative thought. And this is why they say that people really go on a downward spiral, and when you pick yourself back up again, everything starts to change because positivity and positive thoughts thrive on positive energy and the more negative you are the more negative that comes to you and this is a mindset that last year I changed so much so the next time that I remember this was actually our trip to the Maldives last year last April and gosh I can't believe it's almost been a year however again the Maldives is always somewhere that I said I wanted to go we really wanted to go there for our honeymoon but it was just way out of our price budget it was just something that never would be able to be 
done and we just couldn't afford it and then last year last April we took a trip to the Maldives everything was right we ended up in the most amazing water villa overlooking the ocean and we was on an all-inclusive platter the island was stunning like it was a top resort and we went there for a week without the kids and we had an absolutely amazing time and again I've always said I will go to the Maldives I will be there and it was what a year and a bit after our honeymoon that we actually went there so not too far off and we got to experience Mauritius for our honeymoon which was just as amazing but by putting out there that I will be going to the Maldives and it's always been on my bucket list I believe it was genuinely attracted to me and I feel like I've actually missed out a really important one, which is our house. So I always said when we owned a two bedroom house that I wanted my next home to be a four bedroom home and I wanted it to be somewhere in the country. I also said that I wanted it to have a drive that didn't connect to anybody else's. And there are a few little things that I said and I, unbeknown, again, attracted this into my life. So basically, I always said that it would be a four bedroom home and we were house hunting. We'd moved into a rental property because we couldn't afford to buy back down where we were living. And I knew that I didn't want to buy back in the town that we was in and I wanted to be more rural. And so we were looking at homes a little bit more rural, but they weren't four bedrooms. They were three bedrooms. They weren't in very nice areas. They were within our budget, but like top end budget for a home that would then need renovating majorly. And I was pregnant at the time. And it just, none of it was kind of working out or going to play. Plan. and I was kind of like oh gosh and I kept saying to Adam this is the four bedroom home that I want and it happened to be in Devon near where our friends live which is where we now live and on the day that we went and looked at the very last property and it was kind of the one that we was really set on out of them all we went in to view a property down where we used to live and it was a three bedroom and it needed renovating and it was in an awful area and the parking was nowhere near it and it was still about an hour away from our family and it would still mean commuting a lot for work and the mortgage would have been extortionate and when it got to that day just as we were about to get out the car and go and meet the estate agent we had a call from the sales office of the development that we now live on and they were basically calling back to an inquiry that I had made weeks before like weeks and weeks and weeks before and they were calling me back about a four bedroom property that I'd inquired about that was my dream home and that is exactly where my Instagram name our Devon dream house comes from I had unknowingly at that point put into the universe that I wanted this home and I got it I got it they let us reserve it without going to view it they were super kind it's something they're not normally allowed to do but they took it off the market temporarily so we could get down there the following week we went in we viewed that home that was awful we hated it we come straight back out we sat in the car and we said you know what let's do it let's change our lives we've said it for so long what have we got to lose and my mentality on everything is what if like you don't miss out on a moment that you could have had the way that I looked at it was okay I moved to Devon we moved three and a half four hours away from my family fine but what are we losing so Adam would have to change his job okay so be it but in turn it may have given me the opportunity to make my job work which would be YouTube because our mortgage payments wouldn't be as extortionate as what they would be in turn we would have a bigger home that was nicer that hit every single checklist that we could possibly want in a lovely location of Devon and if we don't like it, we just move back. We haven't lost anything. We were only renting down in Kent. So what does it matter if we've moved from Kent and London borders down to Devon and it doesn't work? We just move back. We've got nothing to lose whatsoever. And like I said, we said, fine, let's do it. We did it. And here we are today. We now have our dream home in Devon. This is not our final family home at all, but it was our dream home of what we wanted our next home to be. And I put it out there and I specified the things that I wanted and they are all in this home. And now it is onwards and upwards onto our next home and I'm putting that out into the universe too. So the next thing that I wanna tell you about and you guys would have probably heard from months ago last year was the fact that making this my job was another thing that I put out into the universe. Now, this is something that I've been putting out there for four years. I have said that I want to make YouTube my job actually it would almost be five years in July so five years ago in July I actually started this channel up and it was kind of the September that I launched my first video and it was five years ago that I said that I wanted to do this and at the time it was a hobby so it was never a job for me and then I remember I returned back to work and I couldn't carry on with it and everything was kind of wholehearted and I remember when I went on to maternity leave with Parker 
and before that I had a broken foot and I was off sick off of work and I tried to get back into filming but my foot would hurt and there would always be interactions and disruptions and all things like that and it was like I was half-heartedly giving into it and something clicked after I had Parker and I knew we were moving to Devon something clicked and I said to Adam I will make this my full-time job by the end of the year. And so one of the goals that I didn't actually put right out to you guys when I did my goals video last year, so my 2018 goals, was the fact that I wanted to make this my full-time job if possible. I don't remember recalling telling you guys that. I did say that I would like to make a paycheck from it and that I would like a job that was flexible around the children, but I don't think I specified that I wanted it to be YouTube. But the whole entire time, I was working towards this being my job, making some Something I love, a passion, my job, and having it to be flexible around my children. And every day I put that out into the universe. And there were times for those six, seven months at the beginning where I hadn't even hit 500 subscribers, but I still carried on plowing through. I might have had 10, 15, 100 views on videos at the most. And I was still plowing on through because I was committed that this would be my job. And then in the March time, something clicked and it all just started to go a bit crazy. And I feel like that was down to the law of attraction because that is when I really first read the book. So the book is called The Secret and they also have a documentary on Netflix which you can watch and it goes a lot more into this and I will link it below. I highly recommend you purchasing this. There are also subsequent books that you can purchase after which help enhance your positive energy and the way that the law of attraction works and the way that you'll get back. But I 100% recommend it but it was at this point that I started reading about this book and it really had an impact and from that point my YouTube started going crazy. I was getting views, I was getting shares, everything was just going right and I was working hard but I believed it was going to happen and the whole time I was walking, working towards a deadline. So come the, I think it was the May, June time, my maternity leave was going to finish and at that point I would have to return to work. So I had already been on the point of I had no money coming in because my maternity pay had already finished but there were a couple of months in between that my maternity money, um, I knew that I was waiting for because I would get some holiday payback that would counter out the months that we would at a loss. So I waited out the full year and um, at that point it got to a point where I then started looking for jobs back in account. So before that I was doing travel because I wanted something easier to fit around the boys um, and before that it was accounts and I didn't do the travel for very long. But it then got to a point that I went out and I found a job that was almost perfect However, it wasn't as perfect as it seemed. And just as I thought that I was going to accept that job, something went wrong with that job. And basically they turned around, they said to me, actually, we need you to cover half terms and all the summer holidays and things like that, which wasn't gonna pan out. And then at the very same time, they also then decided to lower the money. So even though I was completely overqualified for the job because I was going in at a lower level because I didn't want the stress, they were basically saying, well, we had to make you in line with everybody else. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you don't make somebody in line with everybody else if they are more capable. And you can't put out a job advert and then lower the money, like that's just ridiculous. But it meant that with a lot of balls and courage, I declined that job. And it was one of the only ones that I thought that was near enough perfect. And I declined that job. And meanwhile, I was still working on my YouTube. And a couple of days later, my YouTube got monetized again. So from the January to the July, I got monetized at the beginning of the January. And two weeks later, I got a notification telling me that I'd be demonetized if I didn't hit the criteria. And I didn't hit the criteria. I think I was at literally about 100 subscribers of hitting the criteria or something silly like that. And I lost my monetization and I hadn't even earned anything. I hadn't even earned a paycheck. And I worked my backside off and literally a couple of days later, I got monetized on YouTube and my channel was going crazy and I had enough money and I was making enough. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't a lot, but it was enough by the time that I'd counteracted childcare and travel out of this other job. I would be making more money doing this from home working around my children and it just seems silly and I really genuinely believe that this was all down to the fate of law of attraction and bringing into the universe what I wanted and now I have managed to make this job my dream job my reality. So I'm basically going to summarise another few things that happened last year that I feel like have all been down to the law of attraction. So the first thing would be my subscribers. I put out into the universe that I wanted 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I smashed it. I then said 5,000, 10,000, 25,000. Like that would have been humongous. 50,000, 75,000. 
80,000 and I think I finished the year just short of 80,000 and again I put out into the universe and I put it on my goals video ambitious targets that I am planning to smash this year fingers crossed with all of this positive mentality I know that I can do it with enough hard work enough dedication and using the law of attraction another thing that I feel the law of attraction brought into us last year was Adam getting his job now basically Adam did a job working for a franchise back down in London he works as an area manager so they only had stores in the London area and when he left that role he moved down and he actually took a demotion to move down here and he lost money he lost salary and we did that because we knew ultimately our mortgage was decreasing we weren't going to be paying extortionate amounts on rent and things like that so we could kind of afford to take a little bit of a car but we struggled he was working ridiculous hours we were down here with no support no family i was home a lot i didn't have many friends when i first moved down here and he slogged away and he hated his job he had a very bad relationship with his manager who was not the nicest person in the world and basically he ended up going, something that I don't know whether I actually shared, he ended up going on leave from work due to, I don't know what you call it, what do you call it, like stress, stress related illnesses and he ended up having two weeks off work because of how bad it had gotten and I said to him, do you know what, just do it and we lost a lot of money in those two weeks of him being off because he didn't get covered for sick pay and I said, we'll make it work, it'll be fine. And he'd been hunting for jobs prior to that, but nothing had really come up. He knew the situation was bad. He, it, it was so severe that he kind of went down a grievance route because of what was going on. And it was really, really bad. And none of this was actually shared. I don't think I shared any of this publicly. And it was something that we was dealing with. And it was a very stressful time. But I had the mentality that something was going to come up. Like, he was going to get the job that he wanted and that he deserved. And boy, did he get it out of any of the jobs that you could possibly find down in the southwest, which is obviously already a very limited area and harder to get a job than London, the job that came up happened to be working for a competitor franchise down here doing exactly the job that he had done back up in London for exactly the same company. So same company, different franchise. And honestly, it couldn't be more perfect if it tried and he went on those two weeks, he went for that interview and he got that job and he smashed it. And now he has his dream job and he is loving it. And we are so much happier with both now. And I believe this is down to the law of attraction and I can't stress how much I believe the law of attraction has an impact on people's lives. The next thing that I wanna talk about really quickly is our garden. This weekend we are getting our garden renovated. I don't know if this is going out before or after the weekend, I haven't quite decided on which way around I'm sharing the videos, but we are getting our garden renovated in the weekend of February. And this is something that I just kind of, we were working on all last year, we were slogging our backsides away, and I said the only way this is gonna be possible is to get somebody in. We don't have the time, we don't have the knowledge, the skill set. we have two children, we have no childcare help, we need Need to get somebody in and we had quotes at times for nine eight grand and they were just extortionate and i said to adam i genuinely believe we can make this work and i believe that we can have our garden happening and here we are almost at the weekend whereby our garden is going to be done and it is going to be amazing and I cannot wait to share it with you all but I again believe that is down to the law of attraction. Now I also have a set salary that I want to earn this year, I have a dream family home that I know in my head that I want to do and there are so many other things and I am dreaming and making all of those a reality. I'm putting all those things out into the universe and they will happen. I have so many exciting things that I want to happen this year and I believe if they do happen it will truly be down to the law of attraction. Now, like I said, I can go into more depth in another video about what the law of attraction is, but I just wanted to share with you how impactful it has been on my life. And this isn't a video for me to boast and say, this is what I have, this is what I have. This is purely what I think the law of attraction has done to my life, not through anything else. Like, yes, hard work, but I believe that it's that mind switch in my head and what I'm giving back to the universe that has caused this to happen. I would love to know if any of you guys have had a similar story whereby you believe the law of attraction has had an impact on your life, if any of you guys believe in the law of attraction, or if any of you guys are going to look into the law of attraction now. Like I said, let me know if you want me to cover more into it and how I got into it and things like that. I will definitely cover that in another video. If you are new, then I would love for you to subscribe. I cover lots of different content from cleaning, interiors, hauls, parenting, travel, God, you name it, I cover it. Self-motivation, finances, the lot. So if you like that sort of thing, then I would love for you to check out my videos. I would love for you to subscribe. If you've liked this video, then give it a thumbs up. And I will see you all again for another video very shortly.
Bye, guys.